All right, everyone. Welcome to a live scrimcast. Here we have Hex and Willowkeeper scrimming today, and uh, this is actually game number three already. So uh, I'm a little bit late today, unfortunately. I missed a couple of games, but you know what? That's okay because we can go back and replay cast them uh, at a later time. So that's no problem at all. But this is game number three here coming at you we got hex on the legion side willow keeper on the hellborn side and we have the blind bands already finished here we have artillery draconis and keeper of the forest going to be blind band here by tree puppet master and magmus and tempest going to be banned out here from hex so a couple of uh, different bands, to say the least. We have the, the Tempest and the Keeper bands, which uh, are some heroes that we do see get picked up from time to time, but uh, they don't really make it to the blind bands. So uh, pretty interesting there that we're seeing um, some blind bands swapping up. And the Magmus, of course, he has his periods of time where he is very high priority for some teams. So the Magmus, he gets banned out here as a, uh, a primary initiator. The Artillery and the Puppet Master and Draconis are bands that we have been seeing quite a lot on this uh, current patch. The Artillery has been getting um, noticed by some of the teams here. We see him from time to time. So unfortunately, we will not be seeing any Doombringer Artilleries in this match, which always makes me a little bit sad, but that will be the case. So we have a first pick of Soul Reaper coming out here from Tree. And Soul Reaper, uh, speaking of popular heroes, he has been a hero that we have been seeing over the past couple of months picked up quite a lot. So a solid team fighter with those Judgment Heals. Um, we typically see the Soul Reaper going into the long lane with something like an Accursed, but we do not have the Accursed picked up just yet. So we'll see if Willow Keeper does decide to go for um, a strategy of that sort, or if they you know, want to put him in some other kind of role this game, because Soul Reaper is a very flexible hero. He can be laned more or less in any of the lanes. Um, just depends on the strategy that they want to employ here. So we're going to see the Gladiator and the Golden Veil picked up here from the side of Hex. Um, Gladiator is actually a hero that we do see banned quite often. Um, similar to the Soul Reaper, the Gladiator can really fill a number of roles. He can be played as a support as well as a very strong core option with that Flagellation uh, being maxed out. And we could see the Gladiator played more or less in any lane as well. So... We have to wait and see the rest of the draft to see uh, where the Gladiator will be going. But with the Golden Veil picked up so far, uh, I am expecting this Golden Veil to be either a main support or secondary support hero. Um, paired up with another kill style of hero to set up lots of ganks in the early to mid game. So very aggressive start to the draft. We have the final two picks of the first picking phase completed now with the Aluna and the Pebbles. Being picked up here from the side of Willow Keeper. So they have two cores and a support picked up so far. The Pebbles, uh, very solid choice here as an initiator. We could possibly see that as a dual mid, um, or we could just see the traditional 2-1-2 uh, lane set up with Pebbles in the mid lane. Um, so Hex now has uh, some thinking to do as to how they want to address the Pebbles. Um, we have the secondary banning wave already taking place now. We have the uh, Balfagor and the Tarot, with one more band coming up for the side of Willowkeeper. So Balfagor, uh, I believe that uh, Hex ran a Balfagor strategy, uh, I want to say earlier in the week or sometime not that long ago. I remember casting a game with a Balfagor. And I believe Snooki played that, and he was very, very solid on the Balfagor. Um, he went more of this caster style of build. I believe he had a portal key and a codex, um, and he was just bursting people down with the hell on New Earth and the codex. And it was kind of fun to watch, um, as it's not your traditional Balfagor style of build, but... Um, it ends up getting banned out here. They Now they final banned the Parasite, which is another hero that Snooki has been playing very, very well. We saw a 600 and I believe it was like 40 or 50 gold per minute Parasite game. He was 
nearing that 600 or 700 gold per minute mark when he uh, did end up losing his uh, streak. But he dominated on that parasite. He had a fantastic performance in early mock into um, a lots of kills, and that game ended up not lasting too too long. So um, I think I could even pull up that match ID. Uh, there was a parasite game where he had 640 gold per minute. So to ban out the parasite here, as they had played against that one uh, earlier in the week. Now we have. Accursed, Pharaoh, and Nighthound going to be banned out here from Hex. So the Accursed ban uh, kind of supplements that first pick Soul Reaper. So that ban is warranted. They do have a fair, excuse me, they do have a fair amount of disables where that fire shield can be disruptive. The Pharaoh and the Nighthound. So the Pharaoh is another initiator to pair with the Pebbles. Um, they do have, they do not have the most mobile of heroes picked up. So the Pharaoh ban um, does make some sense as the lockdown from the Mummy Walls early. Uh, early on in the game could be quite disruptive. And then the Nighthound ban is uh, is not something I'm really too sure about. The Nighthound is not really, in my opinion, that strong of a hero, but um, it, it does allow to be a nuisance running around in biz and setting up uh, kills in the early game. But uh, I, I don't really know why they did choose to ban the Nighthound. That one is quite interesting to me. Um, more or less, I think that's a throwaway ban. The tarot ban, uh, as well from Willow Keeper, is uh, not something I'm all too sure about, but uh, they're going to get rid of that one as a carry, so pretty interesting ban there. We're going to have now the Grinex and the Monarch coming out from the side of Hex, so they have their final pick, which, as I'm a little bit behind here, they have the Monkey King. So now that is their full completed lineup, they have... Um, three cores here with the Monkey King, the Gladiator, and the Grinex, and then they have the supports being both the Monarch and the Golden Veil. So a fairly well-balanced lineup overall, very he uh, heavy on the physical damage. Uh, the magic damage is mostly coming from Golden Veil here, which is, a lot of it is going to be single target. I've, um, he does end up choosing to pick up something like a Codex, um, which is a typical item build for the, uh, the Golden Veil. But uh, we might see some kind of magic build from Gladiator, like a Mock of Brilliance or the Monkey King, one or the other. Um, I'm expecting one of these two heroes to go Mock of Brilliance, but we'll see what they decide to do, um, as they are pretty uh, heavy on the physical damage. Now, the last two picks of the game coming out from Willow Keeper were the Cthulhu Font and the Geomancer. So they go with this uh, aggressive man up uh, dual lane between those two heroes. A lot of burst damage uh, with the Obliterate and the. Why is my game stuck on Runes of the Blade here? That's weird. My interface is kind of... There we go. Um, so they have lots of damage with the Obliterate and the Earth's Grasp and on top of the two stuns. So um, This should be a pretty disruptive lane. Now they are running a carry Soul Reaper, which uh, I'm not too sure if I like Soul Reaper as a single core carry. Um, I think I would much rather prefer him... Uh, supplemented with some kind of physical damage uh, core in the team. Now they do have a Pebbles and a Cthulhu font, so it's safe to say they're going to be looking to win the mid game and try to take this game early because the late game between Gladiator and Monkey King I think will be there for the side of Hex, so I think the longer the game goes it will favor our Legion side, but uh, the early to mid game we should see a lot of pressure and kills happening from the Hellborn side, so that is going to be their goal here. Try to transition um, some good farm on the Soul Reaper and take, take the game into a quicker finish to say the least. So we're going to have two versus two in the bottom lane with Monkey King and Golden Veil vale going up against that dual lane. We have Gladiator and Monarch here, a dual mid going up against the Pebbles, so they will need to rotate one of the supports here. And then we have Grinex uh, going up one versus two against the Soul Reaper and the Aluna. So I think I would like to see the Aluna come to the mid lane here to aid the Pebbles, and they should keep the Geomancer in the bottom lane um, and let the Soul Reaper one versus one with the Grinex. So um, I think they are making the wrong rotation here. I think the Geomancer should stay bottom, and I think the Aluna should go to the mid lane. Um, and then the Soul Reaper can 1 versus 1 the Grinex. But uh, this is going to leave some uh, 1 versus 2s in both the lanes. So both suicide or off lane heroes going to be going 1 versus 2. Uh, 
mid lane we're gonna have the bloodless kill happen here as Pebbles goes down to Gladiator and Monarch. Uh, they have the crippling fallen into Pitfall. Pitfall skill level one by the Gladiator. Looks like they got Pebbles uh, too low on the HP, and uh, that was enough for the bloodless kill. So that one actually went to Monarch. We'll see if he buys early boots. Being in that mid lane, I think the Grave Locket would be a little bit. Perhaps too slow, but uh, he does skill the. Uh, he does actually go the grave locket. So here's going to be a kill attempt, but there's the chrysalis from Monarch. I like that he skilled that at the level two. Now will it be enough for a kill? They do lose the gladiator, but they trade for the geomancer. So pebbles getting a or not pebbles, but geomancer getting the kill. I guess um, they kill the core there. That's a good trade for our hellborn side. So if we see the uh, offlaners, Cthulhuphon has four, four last hits. I'm gonna pick up his fifth one there. Grinnick's still only on two, so he's getting uh, more or less boxed off the creep wave, but still getting the experience quite well. As Soul Reaper gonna have that constant pressure with the judgments and the uh, inhuman nature rejuvenating his mana pool to keep spamming that judgment. Haste on the pebbles here. He does not have mana for a combo, so I don't think we're going to see him. Uh, he needs 220 mana, so pick up some power supply charges there. I'm expecting the, the kills to really happen in this mid lane. It's, this is kind of where the, uh, the action of the game is really taking place. But now we do have the proper rotation here. Geomancer are coming to the bot lane. This is kind of what I think they should have done from the beginning. So the Cthulhu could have been doing a little bit better down here if they rotated appropriately. Uh, no kills happening uh, further. We're just going to see some farm trading. I think once the level start to pick up, we're really going to see. There's the pitfall into the uh, crippling pollen. Not the most burst damage, but uh, they do put some really good pressure here on the pebbles. That's going to force some kind of regen to be uh, ferried out here. Um, otherwise, he will fall to another uh, another engagement. Grinex getting very, very low. Soul Reaper is going to throw out that judgment. Grinex, I believe, actually avoided that. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, okay, Monkey King died. It's going to be two kills as uh, Golden Mail also falls. So there's the, the damage between the Cthulhu and the Geomancer. This is what I talked about at the pick stage. Um, once they get some levels, they obliterate the Earth's Grass. It does do quite a lot of damage. So Monkey King, he fell first. Looks like he may have not gotten his power supply off as well. So he probably got stun locked. And they pick up two kills. So Willow Keeper taking the kill lead now. They also take an experience lead, but they still trail in gold by a little bit. As we see the uh, GPM here, Gladiator on the top so far. 325 gold per minute. There's a pitfall combination with the Chrysalis on top. Do they have the damage though for the Pebbles? Here comes the Chuck. There's the uh, uh, Chrysalis to prevent the Stalagmite damage. And they will both survive here. Monarch now out of mana. We have uh, Golden Veil actually rotating up to the top lane. So they want to force some rotations to help this uh, Soul Reaper from the side of Willow Keeper. And Grinex now being level five, this will be scary for the Soul Reaper as there is lots of damage between both the Grinex and the, the Golden Veil. Vale. So Geomancer comes up here to help the top lane. I don't know if he was spotted up here, but uh, he is hiding in the trees currently. Mid lane, we see a lot of pressure coming out. No kills happening though. Monkey King versus Cthulhu font. I feel like um, Cthulhu by himself, he can't really kill the Monkey King. Oh, I missed the kill up in the top lane. That happened very, very quickly. And uh, I don't know if there was a dust involved, but they catch Golden Veil. Vale. Um, they used a demonic execution for that kill, so they do they do kill the support. Luna will bottle the double damage in here. Grenex is going to get revealed by that Earth's Grasp. He is level 6 here. There's the stun combo. There's the dust. And the final auto attack. So good good use of the dust there. That was without 
activating the double damage too, so they get to keep that for pebbles. So Luna will bring the bottle back to him. Mid lane, we have an engagement going on here. There's the toss onto Gladiator with the double damage. He's gonna use the power supply. Pebbles might have overextended. Now here comes the Monkey King. As he pours in, he uses the slam and flips two pebbles. And there will be the kill. So the Chrysalis from Monarch really preventing that Pebbles combo from taking out the Gladiator. Just too tanky with the power supply in the bottle. Here comes the dig from Geomancer. This should be a kill here. Monarch does not have mana for Chrysalis, unfortunately. So they actually deny the top tower as Soul Reaver was pressuring that quite heavily. And they're thinking about setting up a kill here, I believe, with the Golden Veil and the Grinex. He picks up the Plated Grieve, so that will mitigate some damage from the Grinex. There is the flip, and there's the stun. And Soul Reaper, he is not tanky enough to turn that one around, unfortunately. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Monkey King is getting stun locked here from. Geomancer and Cthulhu font. So both teams killing the opposing team's short lane hero. So more or less it kind of evens itself out. Cthulhu font surprisingly is the top GPM in the game now. He's uh, all the way up at 350 gold per minute. Sitting on 35 creep kills but the 102 stat line being a big part of that. as uh, the top creep killer in the game is still Gladiator. Um, but he has dropped below 300 gold per minute with the death. We see a soul trap picked up on Gladiator. Full steam boots picked up on the Cthulhu font. I believe they're trying to set up another kill here on the, uh, the Soul Reaper. Uh, we have a disconnect here. Okay, they will both the pause. But yeah, the game is more or less even. The Golden XP lead is one in favor of one team, one in favor of the other, but it's nearly identical. And the JPM chart really reflects that. We have one player for each side above 300, and then three players between... 2 and 300 gold per minute with the supports at the very end but Aluna a uh, higher GPM than the Golden Veil so there we see the gold per minute uh, a little bit favoring the Hellborn side but as I said more or less an even even chart so far the uh, interestingly enough the supports are all on top in the damage charts that's due to the early game the lane harassment from the supports then we have the the cores farming and harassing with their spells, the Soul Reaper, the Pebbles, the Monkey King, the Gladiator, and then the two offlaners uh, for good reason at the bottom of the damage charts as they more or less are just getting uh, the experience and the kill uh, creep kills. But uh, Philophon's still actually doing very, very well in comparison to the Grinex, so due to those kills from Geomancer rotating in the bottom lane, that is how we analyze the damage chart. But... Uh, yeah, the game is more or less even, but the Hellborn team with three more kills, so we'll keep it doing quite well uh, so far here in game number three. Um, we have all the ultimates available for the Legion side with, uh, well, still some ultimates lacking here. The uh, Dream of Madness, not really the most useful um, in the early game, so that's why we see Cthulhu Font skipping it and maxing out the... Uh, primary abilities there. Geomancer will most likely get his crystal field when he hits level 6, which he's very close to. And Aluna, she will have their global power throw very soon. But uh, right now, with that slight experience lead, they have the level 6s across the board. Um, I am expecting to see a greed gutter being used here in the near future, and they will try to set up some kills. But with Grenex not having the most mana, um, that could pose an issue for them having the damage here to set up the kill in the top lane. Looks like the uh, teams are ready, so we will resume here at the pre-9 minute mark. But we have Golden Veil scouting this out. It looks like the Geomancer, they know he's up here due to that uh, radar. And uh, I think Golden Veil also saw him using that 
Geostock, so they knew that he was being spotted. Gladiator with the call to arms kind of threatening that kill. Pebbles will rotate into the jungle where he will work on a medium camp stack. Grenax, looks like he got some mana delivered him. There's the greed gutter. Is Soryver gonna be able to go for the turn kill? He's gonna get stun locked here. Gym answer leaving him for the time being. He's just too vulnerable to that damage. Now we do have Gladiator and Monarch coming into the jungle here. They know Pebbles is jungling and they're gonna set up that kill. They catch Pebbles on low HP. Now they're looking for more of the ports that happen from Cthulhu Font. There's the trample, there's the chrysalis though. Preventing some of that damage with Gladiator. He's gonna take too much pressure and he will fall. And now Monarch is getting chased down. The Dream of Madness was skilled there at the level eight for the slow effect and double tap uh, going the way of Cthulhu Font. So they lose their pebbles and their soul reaper, but they get a, a pair of counter kills um, on the gladiator and the monarch. And now while this is going on, Monkey King will get some space to work on the tower damage here in the bot lane. We have a uh, soul reaper continuing to farm in the top lane. Pebbles, uh, with the 0-3 stat line, he is really struggling. He does not have his upgraded boots yet at the 10 minute mark, and he has not a lot of gold towards his portal key, so this is very troublesome for Hellborn, because their lineup is um, determine, determining on the success of Pebbles here to really uh, lead the way for them. They get another kill on the Soul Reaper up here in the top lane, similar story with the Grinex and the uh, Golden Veil. Now, they do trade the Golden Veil, but that is a trade that they will gladly keep taking as the Soul Reaper is really their only source of uh, scaling power on the side of Willowkeeper, um, as we talked about in the draft. And the Monkey King um, s s doing very, very well in terms of GPM. They, they did kill him twice, but they've kind of started to ignore him. And, uh, and the Gladiator also farming on 300 gold per minute. He's going to work on some stacks here, and that's going to really amp up his gold per minute. Monkey King takes out the tower now. We have the rotations coming in from Soul Reaper and Cthulhu Fun, but I don't really see them having the lockdown here for this Monkey King, so he will just kind of take the tower and walk away, and he will continue to uh, farm in the jungle as well. So we see Hex starting to build a lead now with this momentum that they've started. Almost the 3,000 gold, 2,400 experience lead. Grenex picks up the steam boots on top of a warhammer. It looks like he'll be going for an early shield breaker. Um, actually, it could be a shrunken head too. Um, so I shouldn't jump to conclusions just yet. But with the good start that he's had, I, I would expect him to translate into more of an aggressive item. Um, we have Gladiator going for a Luna here. She's gonna activate the Emerald Red. With that evasion, <clears throat> one more auto attack from Gladiator as he has uh, the speed from the Cleansing Wind. Pitfall will connect onto two. Monarch goes for the TP, but that's not going to work. We even have the Demonic Execution being used there. Ports happening in the top lane from Soul Reaper. Golden Veil, he's looking to land a perch and plunge. Grinax is going to stun him up, and he <clears throat> did not have his Demonic Execution there. The Soul Reaper will fall once again, and uh, it's starting to be a trend now where the Soul Reaper and the Pebbles are really not translating uh, well enough into uh, the mid game. They are struggling to get over uh, in, into the 300 plus GPM territory. Geomancer gets spotted out here as well from the Golden Veil and the Grinex, and it's starting to become troublesome for Willowkeeper because they do not have a lineup that can really lose momentum and they are going to really be under farmed going into the mid game so the fact that the greedier lineup here from the side of Hex is kind of paying off this is very very troublesome Pebbles or Monkey King is going to try to avoid that Pebbles combo but Pebbles being very patient there waiting for Monkey King to uh, use his spells he catches him Cthulhu Funk gets the kill he is now an ultimate warrior See Cthulhu Font uh, building more into those 
build up items. He's going to pick up the vestments on top. Monkey King picked up a light brand, so we'll probably see either a Dawnbringer or a Grimoire of Power. I think the Dawnbringer would be a little bit better on Monkey King, but we'll see what Snooky decides to go. There is a lot of stuns here. I don't know if that warrants a Grimoire pickup or not, but we'll see what he decides to do. Golden Veil does not go for a Codex. He picks up a Beast Heart. And speaking of him, he will get <laughs> spotted out here by four players. So. They bring him down. And uh, it looks like he's going for a dream catcher. So they want that for the Soybear, I suppose, to limit his healing. It's an interesting choice, but it does bulk him up quite a lot. Shaman's head just picked up on the Gladiator, so he's going to be going into the Barrier at all. I'm a big fan of this... Uh, this pickup on the gladiator because it just makes him so tanky with the call to arms buff as well we're gonna see chrysalis come out here so the monarch and the gladiator are so darn tanky and now the ports are coming in grinex in the background they're gonna catch cthulhu font there with the showdown he gets pulled back it will be his first de first death of the game now and uh aluna she might just get tower dove here there this is just uh too many players here. Pebbles is going to land a combo here on the Golden Veil, but not enough damage to bring him down. Here comes a showdown. Demonic execution landing on the Golden Veil, but they don't have the damage to bring him down. Yes, they do, as the Judgment does connect there as he flies to the tree. The whip comes out, and it's going to be a hat trick for Fa on the Gladiator. He's going to try to make it a quad kill, but Soul Reaper will just get too far away, and that's going to be an 11,000 gold lead now for the side of Hex. As they are just clicking on all cylinders here. They take a fantastic team fight here in the mid lane at the 15 minute mark. And again, Pebbles just not anywhere as close to his portal key. He's only sitting on the Ghost Marchers. We have an Astrolabe picked up on the Soul Reaper. Uh, there is a portal key on the Cthulhu Font, but I just don't know if it's going to be enough with Soul Reaper only on 300 gold per minute. And both the Gladiator and the Monkey King now upwards of 500 plus gold per minute with Grinix as well at 460 as he picks up an early Shrunken Head. So I was right in saying I shouldn't jump to conclusions there. The Shrunken Head is really going to allow him to sit in team fights uh, comfortably with the Shrunken picked up. He might need to pop that Shrunken right away. He doesn't get it off and there it is as the stuns wear off. And now he's pounding in the right clicks with the tower with four heroes hitting him is going to do some good pressure here. They get the one kill onto Pebbles and now Grinex. Will he make the escape? The Rev Ward will spot him out. Here comes a Crystal Field going to stun up both. Will they be able to get the turn kills? The trample on top and it's a double tap coming out for Cthulhu Fon, but with that debuff on him, he still goes down to the Golden Veil. So it ends up being a three for two team fight in the end as they get the kills onto Monkey King and Grunex uh, in exchange for that Pebbles and Cthulhu font. So two cores from both sides falling. Um, despite it being a three for two, I do think it's not really it's not really enough of a favorable exchange here for Hellborn um, to to make I think a big enough impact. I think they're still farming too too well. So. I think that's going to have to happen a couple more times. We even see a gladiator. He picks up a sword of the high. So I talked about one of these two heroes picking up a mock, and it will be the gladiator. I think, I think it's just fine um, to have it on the gladiator, as he will, um, he will be able to farm much, much better with that bonus damage to the flagellation. Whereas Monkey King, he kind of just farms with the spells, um, as we see him now having quite a lot of mana regen and mobility with that searing light picked up. We're going to have a kill here on the Aluna. He gets spotted out by the, the Invis duo of Grinix and uh, Golden Veil. Very nasty combo as they line up their spells. So we're going to try to uh, pick up his farm here in the jungle. He's going to pick up a Neophyte's book. I think that this will go into possibly a Grimoire of Power. I think he's going to be looking for that stun removal as well as that uh, cooldown reduction. Pebbles is gonna get stunned up here from the Golden Veil. Soul Reaper is nearby though. Here comes the dust. Grinex pops the Shrunken head. Here comes the trample, but it does not connect as that Shrunken is activated. And will the Legion team be able to lock them down? But Willowkeeper is here with a full five. Gladiator is in the mid lane currently. The Monkey King he throws out the uh, the one, or the, uh, the Heavenly Bolt, and he will fall back now. Golden Veil, he's going to eat some spells here. He's going to get hit with the Chrysalis. Is he going to be able to survive this? He's healing with the uh, power supply as well. The call to arms comes in. There's a legendary straight for Gladiator. Make it 
another kill. This one going for uh, going the way of Golden Veil vale, and Grinex picks up a double tap. The GGs are called. It's a full genocide in favor of Hex, and the lead they have built is just too large. It's almost 20,000 gold here at the 20 minute mark. So Willow Keeper has had enough. They throw in the towel, the concede boat comes out, and that will do it here for game number three. As uh, Hex takes that one in a pretty decisive fashion.